Hi folks, thanks for checking out this video here on G4G Games for Gamers. I'm your host, Napalm Dawn. Today's background music is brought to you here by One Hour of Steampunk and Futuristic Music. Not really too sure why I picked it. It just happened to appear on my front page, so I thought I would use it as the backdrop for today's video, which is going to be a video about the new Miss Marvel Kamala Khan, or Kamala Khan, I guess. And I'm also going to throw in Baron Von Mordo. So, I earned Mordo today from lockboxes. I needed to fill up the bonus bar twice in order to get him. And I was able to get him once I finished out the second bonus bar. My last two covers were bonus bars. You may see me here in this particular mission. That is because this mission actually has a, a very good gun that is a phenomenal instigator for the uh, follow-up heavy groups, the Spider Noir, Rocket Raccoon, Union Jack type groups, and it is off of this uh, challenge mode fight over there. You will find this in Season 2. Chapter 4, Mission 1. And it is the challenge mode version of the Mark VI, or the MK6 revolver. Uh, it has that accoutered, preemptively counters ranged attacks against any ally. If this is in the hands of a bruiser running the Elite ISO, this will follow up. And I fought an agent earlier today who was running this, and uh, he actually got quite a lot of counters in over there. Uh, let me see if I can find him in my battle reports over here. Just wanted to point this out because people... It, this is a very underrated gun for that type of group. Let me see if it was this guy. Um, because he was firing off like crazy. No, it was not this guy. No, not that guy. Uh, was it my last guy, Darko? So my, my PvP defense has been doing okay. Um, yeah, here he is. Look at what this guy stacked up. So this was Rocket Raccoon and Spider-Man to War. He has the Restored Revolver, the Grace Note, the Bug Zapper, the Bog, and the T-Bolt. He only ever really used the Restored Revolver. And the grace note in combat but that's really all he needed to do because um it was a very good counter to me running amazing spider girl uh I i'd say if he was equipped with the not elite iso but the counter melee attacks over there it, it would have been obnoxious but uh yeah he definitely was instigating a lot of follow-ups over there hafe was Kind of working overtime so let me go ahead and show you kamala over here and i'm also going to show you baron mordo mordo has probably the highest attrition hit that i've ever seen in my life i mean he at level one i mean i know he was hitting big during the spec ops uh where you use him in the one battle and he does phenomenal phenomenal damage but uh you should see uh, i'm gonna try to set up a flank situation here because this is where he happens to really really shine I mean, he builds his own damage hugely. You don't even really need to set up for him. But if you can set up for him, it's really good. So Kamala has a passive where she has a chance to teleport the entire team away from AoE attacks. So first, I'm going to use the... Yeah, the book is a quick action. And then I'm going to use Smothering Shadow to get out some Bane and Magic. So over here, as you can see, she's level 2 for me. 
I had a weird bug with training today. Anytime somebody got capped in experience by me bringing them to combat, every time I went to go train them, I kept getting forced refresh errors. Really odd. But I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to summon Lockjaw. So he comes in, he barks, and he phases out. And basically what it does is it makes your team have a chance to avoid AoE attacks. There's her level 1 and biggin. And now watch what Mordo is going to be capable of. So the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use this quick action astral phase on myself. Then we're going to astral project somebody who is flanked. And now watch this follow up. That's 10k. It's, it was kind of off screen, but that is a level 2 doing 10k damage. And that was a white hit. It wasn't even a crit. So we haven't seen her passive go off yet, but we may. This is going to be a quite a long battle. So that's, that's the blind justice hit over there. I got a seven lock jaw, and then because we have bruisers over there, and we don't want to create that scrapper bonus quite yet, I'm just going to have her restore stamina to the team. Get out some attrition style debuffs over here. Again, drop a grimoire to get everybody flanked. There we go. There's the passive, and everybody dodges. It's very similar to Magic's alt suit. So if we look over here, this is Astral Aggressor. It does not remove his phase effects. Bypasses cage effects. It's a desperation attack. It guarantees crits. It ignored defense. The higher this character's stamina, the more damage it does. It's stealthy. It's a summon. I mean, this is such a huge setup. This one really could make a splash in PvP. And now watch what this follow-up does. Look at that. That's huge damage. He's level 2. He has no ISOs. I didn't even really do a hell of a lot of setup. So the other thing that she could do here on a level 2 is that she can make herself uh, potentially avoid single target attacks. Alright, so that's the end of this round. And here we go with the Infiltrators. So again, we'll summon Lockjaw. And we'll just friggin' Plastic Man big hands down that top one. We'll drop the... Since this is a debuff, it is a quick action because of the suit. And we'll just drop the heal from the lantern. So now these guys aren't flanked this time. So I'll just have him do a regular level 1. 7,000 crit. And that's pretty big. Considering that was not a whole lot of setup. Over there. He's, you know, in this bruiser heavy meta, he's going to be really, really strong. And the fact that you can phase him and make him avoid so much, uh, it's, it's really going to be big. Mordo is just going to do crazy amounts of damage, especially if he's set up right. So, let's take a look at both of these guys in detail. First, we will go over to Magic. 
and take a look at the passive that she is giving us now with her suit that she got a little while ago. So here, stepping disc, chance to teleport all allies evading incoming area attacks can avoid catastrophic attacks. Now, if we take a look at uh, Kamala, and we take a look at Lockjaw over here, high chance all allies evade area attacks, including catastrophic. She gets rising up when she's attacked, so if you combo this with magic, uh, it could be really good. You could run a defense of one of the interrupting ISOs, like an interrupting range, an interrupting melee, and then something like this now there's no guarantee the defense is always going to spam lockjaw as it may spam the single target but magics isn't always on passive so even if she messes up and does the single target it's not too bad so she is a member of the inhuman she may reduce damage from non-energy attacks Morphogenic healing factor gradually restores health during combat. She removes a dot every round and she also restores some health after recharge. Very interesting if potentially the recharge resting ISO will aid on that. Uh, her health, stamina, and attack are average. Her defense and accuracy are very good and evasion is shit. Kind of because she kind of, you know, she builds her own evasion in there. So using the PKB method, you would gear her up for health, attack, defense, and accuracy, and you would leave evasion alone. Her level 1 is Embiggen Chops, which we've seen. It does combo setup and weak point. She's kind of like Karnak, really. Her 6 is Boot to the Head, and I bequeath to Kamala a Boot to the Head. If those are not familiar with it, it is a skit from a Canadian uh, comedy troupe that was very famously redone as Phoenix Wright or Phoenix Wrong over on YouTube where the Phoenix Wright people were used to act out the sketch. It's very funny. Uh, one enemy gets wide open and she does wind up. So if you have the scrapper bonus, you're going to do boot to the head and follow with Embiggen, which is very good. Big Brawl. This is where her huge numbers are going to come in. has a two-round cooldown. It is combo setup, but it also exploits combos and does finest hour. She gets combo setup over there. However, of course, this is very risky in the bruiser heavy meta with the Hugen's Eye and the Elite ISO. You could, um, on defense, she may be okay. She would be about as good as Karnak without all the pre counters. But, um,. She may be very interesting. Hard to predict what she would do. Here is Mordo. He has Death Ward. He's immune to fatal, near fatal, and brutal effects. Desperate measures. All of his attacks gain desperation. He deals higher damage when he's low on health. Attacks become measured, dealing increased damage when he's high on stamina. Reluctant Defender. Chance to gain a shield before being attacked. Allies have a chance to gain a shield when low on health before the attack. His level 1 is the uh, attrition exploiting bolts of Balthak and it also exploits strain so he's gonna go very very well with the lunacy. The lunacy will help out tremendously. His astral phase is a quick action we saw that. The first time he does it is he phases himself and then he does the Astral Projection, which gives him the Astral Aggressor. And all of these things here, including the Despair and Straining. This, if you can set up a very healthy Baron Mordo, or a high stamina Mordo to flank on somebody, this 1-2 combo of the level 2 followed by the level 1 is super big. He also has Sinister Summoning. We see this when we fight Mordo in a lot of the fights. It is a summon attack, as is this one. So this can be made a, a quick action with the right ISOs. Chaos Shot and Breakdown. This feeds his bolts of Balthak very, very much. Since it is one enemy, if you have a flanked kind of a scenario, if you run the Lunacy to set up the Straining, 
and have him do a 6 and a 1 on somebody, likely that will be huge, huge damage. And we also have the Crimson Bands of Sidorak. It's subtle, and of course we know what this is. This is kind of like being force caged by Invisible Woman. Can only use subtle or defensive abilities. Can't protect or counter. Can only be hit by phased attack or subtle attacks or defense abilities. Imagine how the lunacy works with this. If you ran him with Null and you ran him with the lunacy, the lunacy would remove subtle from everything. And uh, that would mean Null would have the ability to preemptively counter subtle actions. So if you force somebody into using subtle actions by phasing them, Null will still be able to hit them. But I'm actually going to do a video specifically on the Lunacy and show that to you guys. So, there is a look at the new Miss Marvel. Remains to be seen if she shows up in this iteration in Marvel Heroes. I don't think she is currently, but she may appear there. Uh, we've also got some word that Elsa Bloodstone will be showing up. She is currently in Marvel Future Fight. I would like to see the one who's over in Marvel Contest of Champions. The, um, I'm forgetting her name right now, but, uh, it is the chick with the big sword, the French girl with the big sword. She hits like an absolute truck in Marvel Contest of Champions. Um, she's up right now with their little sequence that they're doing called Blood and Venom. Uh, Guillotine, maybe? I think it's guillotine or something. Yeah, she has a really big sword and she does a lot of damage in that game as a three-star hero. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this look at Kamala and Baron Mordo. I have my poor A-bomb ready to train to nine, but we have so many new heroes. I just don't have the space for it. Fixer's training for another four hours. I want to get Hyperion. It just really threw me off to have this PvP so quick. I wanted to raise... Quite a few more tacticians uh, before I got there. By the way, Spitfire is working out really, really well. When her passive procs, that kind of um, one for all join in passive that she has, the uh, that together, that united, it's very, very good. And she is she's a lot of fun. Her voracious vixen restores her to full health when that person dies. I mean, like, literally, full health, full stamina. It's like the beginning of the battle again. And uh, I do find it a little bit of a shame that her follow-up is not AoE, like Quicksilver. Uh, it's just another single-target Fiery Fist. But she's, she's been fun. Definitely looking forward to ranking her up to 9 so I can try out Sleeping Tiger. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned to the channel for... Uh, a video dedicated to some things you can do with the Lunacy. And as always, follow me on Twitch and Twitter for PvP Season 25. I am doing all of my matches in PvP. Well, not all of them, but I will be doing at least four to five matches per day on Twitch. And it occurs somewhere between maybe about 1 o'clock Eastern Time and about 4 o'clock uh, Eastern Time. Every single day. It just kind of depends on how the schedule runs. But just follow me there and you'll get the notifications. Take care everybody. Have a good one.